What's up guys? This is the perfect opportunity for me to talk to you guys about repeaters. Uh, we're going to go from the practicality of it, how to build one on your own, uh, what to look out for, the expanse and all that good stuff. Uh, it's going to be an all-in-one uh, video project and this is pretty much going to be the pinnacle of my channel because uh, this is what I'm yeah. ultimately going to get into here pretty soon but I'm, I, I would like to kind of go through the uh, background of all right let's get it started so an actual repeater is an expensive piece of gear which is out of the uh, league of many of us except if you're in a ham club or uh, governments and local municipalities and whatnot those are the and or businesses those are the guys that pretty much have a full-fledged repeater this is an older repeater made by an Australian company called Spectra Engineering what a repeater is it, it enables you to use a handheld or mobile or your home base and enable you to transmit to the repeater like a halfway distance and then the repeater will do just that it will take your signal and repeat your signal simultaneously out to, to the to the world on another channel that everybody else is tuned to so you're actually using two frequencies uh, a transmit frequency and a receive frequency your radio your handheld or your uh, mobile or your basin station can only receive and transmit one at a time so if this is receiving it's not transmitting when this is transmitting this is not receiving it is either one or the other a repeater does both it could transmit and receive at the same time if you look in the back here this uh, antenna jack is your transmit jack so this is going to go out to the antenna and this is your receive jack so transmit and receive is separated in in repeater sets now here's a portable repeater uh, it's commercially made but it, it resembles something that somebody will build in their garage as a, as a uh, geek project or something so in this design what you have typically is two separate radios uh, one will receive this one's going to receive and this one will transmit when it's activated for repeater mode uh, this has an internal battery and it also has an external battery as well which is being charged right now uh, and also when it's deployed for a natural emergency uh, we have a 80 watt solar panel which turns out to the current will be 4.6 watts around there uh, with full sunlight hitting it so you got 4.6 amps of current feeding your batteries throughout the day so this unit here will transmit and receive at the same time and I'll demonstrate it here. Here's my repeater. And here's a demonstration demonstration of what's going on. See? This guy's receiving and this guy's transmitting. And that's just how it's built. Receive radio, transmit radio. And they're both programmed the same way except they're that the frequencies are reversed. Test five, four, three, two, one. And you heard my kickback there. Just like a repeater. Now here's a, here's a more, the more traditional repeater, and I'm gonna go ahead and activate it. See? It received, then it retransmits that signal right back out. And the power that this thing is putting out is 41 watts. Now that's the power that's gonna come out from your transmitter here and feed directly into the antenna but on a repeater it's a different story you see this is transmitting and receiving at the same time uh, you would think that the transmitter needs a separate transmit antenna and the receiver needs a separate receive antenna so it could do both tasks at the same time here in this unit it's the same thing this port here is your receive antenna and this is your transmit antenna uh, two separate antennas to have this in repeater 
uh, mode. But you can run into problems where, where it's something called receiver desensitization. What that is is when somebody talks on their mobile, on their handheld into the repeater and this thing repeats the, the, the and it starts transmitting, as in this case, the transmitter power will overpower the receive antenna causing it to desensitize. When you're up close like I am, you won't know the difference. It's when you walk away and go distance that that will be evident because the more you walk away or drive away, the weaker the, your signal is going to reach the uh, repeater. So if you go five miles down the road, it may cut out on you. As soon as you transmit your repeater here, Will, will overpower the receiver will overpower the receiver cutting it out or blocking it from access from you five miles away whereas if you use a duplexer and a duplexer is a device this is a duplexer for that particular unit this is a series of filters and what a duplexer will do is when, it, when you transmit it would block that transmit power from going into your receiver which will stop it from overpowering the uh, receive circuit when, you, when you're five miles away so you could go 10, 20, 30 miles away and, and your repeater will not know the difference but without a duplexer uh, you're gonna have major problems with, with desensitization now with the duplexer all installed you got your transmit your transmit line coming into the duplexer from your transmitter back here so this is my transmit line and remember we had 40 watts coming into this and this is where the receive port comes in from your radio and it goes into the same device on the other end and like I said this is a series of, of cavity filters so the input and output is going to come out of one port and this is where you put your one antenna. A duplexer will enable you to use one antenna to do the transmit and receive uh, functionality without having uh, the uh, desensitization problem. But this is expensive. This here alone is like 1500 bucks. Uh, this is commercial grade dupl duplexer and there are larger ones like these older ones here just cavities which could be con configured into a duplexer same with this and this setup here is like two grand three grand maybe at the time that this was purchased and remember we had 50, 40 watts coming out of this it's a give-and-take relationship for for you to have an efficient system the power has dropped down to 31.5 watts instead of your full 40. Now that give and take relationship, the, the, uh, the downfall of using a duplexer is some of your power will be used up by the duplexer itself, absorbed by the duplexer, going through the filters, and that's why the power here has dropped from 40 to, 40, to 31 watts. There's no way around it. Everything is gonna have some degradation of signal. Even your receive signal coming from the field will be degraded by a little bit, not that much. But it's way better than having two separate antennas at the same time. Now here's that same unit, the uh, portable repeater here, which is a scaled down version of what we've seen over here. And what we have here, this is the duplexer. This little box right here is just miniaturized and that is your duplexer in a more portable configuration this device here an American made good quality company and this has a bandwidth of 151.5 to 159.5 now, now that's the bandwidth of this filter so if I need to go to other frequencies like a ham frequency which is down into the 140s I cannot use this duplexer uh, the losses will be too great and, and it, it would run really inefficient. And in that case, 
there's no other alternative but to use two separate antennas a transmit antenna and a receive antenna and that's why we have these two additional ports here to accommodate that and on the front here I can go from duplexer on the, the selector switch here and go to antenna and that would separate that would bypass the duplexer and actually use these two ports here to separate the two antennas uh, the one caveat to make that work correctly is to have them at least 16 feet apart minimum and maybe one offset one higher than the other get that vertical and horizontal separation to to alleviate the uh, desensitization problem uh, what I would do is I would carry on one of these filters with me tuned to uh, put this in the receive circuit so I could do some filtering of the uh, transmit side here from preventing it from being desensitized but ideally you would want to use a duplexer now you see how expensive a duplexer could be from this little unit here I think the eBay China made stuff is a hundred bucks but I don't know the uh, quality of them things I would like to get one and experiment with it but I can't justify the money to waste on it maybe my curiosity will get the better of me uh, so that is the reality of repeaters out in the field from this man packed uh, box here to the uh, rack mounted uh, permanent installation here so here's the process I got it all interconnected gonna transmit 31 watts here we go on this portable repeater same thing I got the duplexer to utilize one repeater Five, four, three, two, one. and the duplexer is doing its job separating both transmit and receive to be able to use one antenna and there's my simulated antenna safely done and efficiently engineered to do what it's supposed to do but guys this is expensive even if the cheapest way is a hundred bucks two radios uh, let's put some bullfangs or Ye Yesus or not Yesus Wuxons in there uh, let's say 75 75 so that's 150 250 the battery would be $20 or, or so on eBay then you need some sort of controller the controller alone will be another 150 bucks it will add up this unit here weighs 45 pounds just this box alone and it's got an internal battery and that internal battery would only last maybe two three hours uh, on low power here that's why we have an external battery with a marine ba uh, deep cycle uh, battery in it. That's an extra, let's see here, 70 pounds. 70 pounds, 45 pounds, 80 watt solar panel to run this whole unit out in daylight. That's another 20 pounds or so. For an individual family prepper to, to deploy this on their own, yeah, if you got a vehicle, uh, it, it's manageable, but you're looking at a lot of expensive gear to be stolen. Also, the weight to lug this up a hill or a building, this here is not practical to, to be deployed. I mean, it could be done, but then again, the weight will still be the same. It'll be at least 75 pounds for the whole thing to be put together in a bug out or, or or go box they actually call this a uh, uh, portable repeaters go boxes and that is too expensive we're talking about a thousand fifteen hundred bucks for this then this radio here is at least two grand then the batteries to go with it charge controller uh, 80 80 or 20 watt or 40 watt solar panel real expensive so these are the realities of portable repeaters or, or individual repeaters out there for your own use I'm gonna go ahead and do some armchair engineering amateur engineering to build a portable simplex repeater that you could put in a uh, ammo box 
and deploy it and it won't weigh no more than 20 pounds it'll have a solar panel to it much smaller much simpler with a lot more capabilities which I will get into painful details in upcoming videos as I go through the process of building this thing from start to finish uh, no details will be left out of this whatsoever this is probably going to be the uh, highlight of my channel the flagship video that I've been sort of building up to for all these years because all this time since I started YouTube to this point was research laws and technology and what could be done and a lot of suggestions and experience of what I've seen out in the field that work and doesn't work and uh, I'm gonna take you guys on the journey with me and see how this thing goes. Relegate 